So this uh, video is going to help you with some of the problem solving questions that you will have in your September test. We're mainly going to look at when we have a compound or a molecule and um, dealing with how many moles of atoms there are within that molecule and then also looking at some questions dealing with proportion. So when it comes to moles of atoms in molecules or compounds, it's a relatively straightforward um, process. So say we have something like CH4, um, methane. If we have one molecule of it, of methane, it means that we have one mole of carbon, sorry my hands not being as nice as it normally is, and we have four moles of hydrogen. And we get those numbers just from, sorry, I don't know why I've done that. The four is from here, and our one is from the fact that there's no number. So it's as simple as that. When it comes to things like ionic compounds, say we've got NH4 to SO4, if we have uh, one mole of it, we will have two moles of NH4 and one mole of SO4. But say we changed it, say that we had three moles of NH4 in this. That would mean for every one, we have two, so we would have 1.5 moles of NH4. And we would have, um, oh no, sorry, we'd have six moles of that because we've got twice the number and we would have three moles of sulfate. So whatever the number of moles you have of that compound, whatever number there are of it in the formula, you just multiply. So in this one, what we've got is for the following pairs of gases, which have the same number of oxygen atoms. Now to do this, we kind of need to know chemical formula. So for the first one, oxygen, is O2, uh, dioxide, well carbon dioxide, CO2, and carbon monoxide is CO. So one mole of oxygen, that means it has two oxygen. One mole of oxygen, two oxygen. Half a mole of oxygen means the oxygen has one oxygen and one mole of oxygen, two oxygen. Now let's deal with our carbon dioxide. So I'll do those in a different color. Um, so carbon dioxide. So one mole of carbon dioxide has two oxygens. So half a mole is gonna have one oxygen. One mole of carbon dioxide here is gonna have two oxygens and this one one mole of carbon dioxide is also going to have two oxygens and then finally we've got one that says carbon monoxide and it's one mole so it's going to have one oxygen and it's asking us which one has the same well if we look d is where we have 20 and or sorry two oxygen and two oxygen right this is a more common question where you've been told a mixture of chemicals and then you get told about uh, two of the ions and you have to problem solve what the third one is. So to do this again requires a knowledge of formula. So potassium chloride, potassium is in group one and chlorine is in group seven so they both have a valency of one so it comes out as KCl. Potassium has a valency of one. Carbonate, if you look up on your data booklet in that table of um, ions containing more than one element, carbonate has a valency of two. So potassium dicarbonate is K2CO3. Now, from 
our question, we know that in chlorine, uh, chloride ions, sorry, we have 0 0.1 chlorine. For carbonate, we have 0 0.1 of it as well. Now, what we can start working out is our potassium. Now, for every one chloride, we have one potassium. So we have 0 0.1 potassium there. In this one, for every one carbonate, CO3, we have two potassium. So we've got 0 0.2. If we add those together, we get 0 0.3 potassium, which gives us D. This is another one like that. This one's sodium chloride and sodium sulfate. And again, we need to know our formula. Sodium chloride, sodium's in group one, chlorine's in group seven. So it is NaCl. Sodium sulfate, sodium's in group one. It's got a valency of one. Sulfate is another one where you have to look up that table of ions made from more than one atom. And it's SO4, but its valency is two. So it is Na. 2SO4. Okay, so in this one, we've got NaCl, and the information we have is that we have 0 0.6 chlorides, which means, because it's a one to one ratio, we're going to have 0 0.6 sodiums. In our next one, our Na. 2SO4, we have 0 0.2 of sulfate. Now, for every one sulfate, there are two sodiums, which means we're going to have 0 0.4 sodiums. We add those together, that gives us 1.0 sodium. So that's how we do those ones. The proportion problems some of you will be really, really good at proportion and will not need this tutorial on proportion. The method I'm going to teach you is just for those people who struggle with it and there's just a wee, um, I'll say fun, but you, probably not fun, uh, way in which it can help you solve proportion problems. And it's called the fish method. So it's going to involve you drawing a fish and I've got a really shaky hand today so this might not work out the best. But if we know, for example, that four grams of a fuel produce 1,470 kilojoules of energy. The question could be, well, what mass of that fuel would produce 2,000 kilojoules of energy? Now, some of you will be able to, to know exactly what you're supposed to do, but if you're not sure in a situation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our four grams, and we're gonna draw a fish. And our fish has a wee bow tie on it. It also has a mouth and an eye. Now that um, bow tie is an X, and that's gonna mean multiply. And this mouth and an eye is gonna mean divide. So to work out X, what we do is we start at the start of our fish. It's gonna be four. We are then Following it around, we've got our bow tie, which means multiply. So we're going to multiply by 2000. Then we've got our eye and mouth, which means divide. And we're going to divide by that next number. And that's going to take us to our x. So this is going to be 8000 divided by 1470. Let's do right now. which gets us, oh, where's my pen gone? Sorry, which equals 5.4 grams. So as long as you start on the number above the X and draw your fish finishing at the X, you can't go wrong. However, the, you just have to find a way of setting up the problem in that format where we know that this number produces a second number, so our unknown produces a different number. So here's our first example. 
Um, so we're told a lethal dose for this alpha amanitin, amanitin sorry, um, is 100 milligrams per kilogram of body mass. And we've been told that one gram of death cat mushrooms contains 250 milligrams of alpha amanitin. Calculate the minimum mass of death cat mushrooms that would contain the lethal dose of for a 75 kilogram adult. So the first thing we need to know is what is going to be our lethal dose for a 75 kilogram adult. So one kilogram is 100 milligrams. So 75 kilograms is going to be 100 times 75, which is just 7,500 if we're American or 7,500. Now we can set up our a proportion. So 1.0 grams contains 250 milligrams. What is going to contain 750, uh, sorry, 7,500 milligrams? Well, this one is a bit more straightforward because we've got the number one, but remember our bow tie and our eye is going to be one multiplied by 700, uh, 7,500 divided by 250, which when we work it out, comes out at exactly 30. Now you need units. This says minimum mass. It doesn't give us units, so we need to put units. That is 30 grams because it's on this side of the equation where grams is our units. And 30 point, 30, zero, 30 or 30 point zero is fine. Next one is a slightly harder one. Um, so what we have got um, in this one is we've been told um, the level of hypochlorite in swimming pool needs to be maintained between one and three parts per million. So between one and three ppm. We've been told that 400 centimetres cubed of hypochlorite will raise the level of a pool of 45,000 litres by 1 ppm. And it's calculate the volume of hypochlorite that will be needed um, to be added to an Olympic sized swimming pool capacity 2.5 million litres. And this time we're raising it from 1 to 2. Uh, sorry, from one to three. So firstly, that means we're raising it by two ppm. Now the information we had here was for one ppm. So we're going to need to multiply that one by two to set up our ratio, our proportion. So 400 centimetres cubed times two gives us 800. And that will be what is needed to raise the PPM by two for a pool of 45,000. We want to know what volume is going to work on a pool of that size. So, uh, X is going to be our 800 multiplied by our 2.5 million and divide by our 45,000. Now, when you do that, you get a value of uh, 44444 centimeters cubed. Now, if we look, uh, we did this in about 45,000 um, litres, so you could change that to 44000 centimetres cubed. Uh, sorry, to 400 centimetres cubed, keeping it to the same number of significant figures. Or you could turn it into litres, which would be 44.4 litres just by dividing by a thousand. Now it just says volume, 
So we do need units to get the second mark. Okay, so if you can do that fish, the identifying the proportion, know what you need to multiply, what you need to divide, that's what gets you one mark. Having the correct units is what is needed to get the second mark. If you do not have the correct units, the maximum you can get is one mark. Hopefully that helped. I know it was quite long. I will chapter this video for you.